Spirulina, with a long history of vitality. Spirulina, growing in clean nature with sufficient sunlight and clean water, is an excellent source of protein and various nutrients. With pure deep sea water in Kailua Kona, reliable and fresh ingredients that grow in a clean environment. Capsules of 100% pure spirulina. Atomy, 100% pure spirulina. Three remarkable antioxidants of spirulina. Phycocyanin, SOD, chlorophyll. Spirulina benefits skin health and antioxidants and contains 60 kinds of nutrients required for good health. Two capsules a day with water. One of the most ancient of all Earth's plants. Atomy. 100% pure spirulina. Hey guys, Dr. Kat here, PhD in marine biology and founder of... In this video, we'll talk about what is spirulina. Then we'll go into details about the proven benefits of spirulina. And then I will also explain how to use spirulina and how much to take. So let's start. What is spirulina? Spirulina is an aquatic organism, typically living in freshwater alkaline lakes. Each individual algae is 300 to 500 microns in length, a size that can just barely be detected by the naked eye. It looks like a tiny green string rolled into closely bound spirals, like you see here, hence the name. Spirulina is a blue-green algae, which is the same as saying cyanobacteria. And we'll see in just a minute why it is important to know that spirulina is a good bacteria. So, spirulina is basically similar to other sea vegetables that you are familiar with, like nori, dulce, or chlorella. But there is one major difference with all the other sea vegetables. Because spirulina is a bacteria, it means that it does not have cellulose in its, in its cell walls but a complex of sugars and protein. And this is why these walls are easy to digest and make the cell content readily accessible to digestive enzymes. And this is a major advantage when you compare it to other organisms with cellulosic cell walls like chlorella or yeast. This is the reason why it's very easy to assimilate and the nutrients have such a high bioavailability. Now that you know what spilina is, what about spilina health benefit? Spilina is loaded with nutrients that can have powerful effects on your body and your brain. It is one of the richest nutrient and complete food source found in the world. And this is not an empty claim. Imagine, imagine a vegetable with more protein than beef more iron than spinach, more vitamin A than carrots, and more calcium than milk. Imagine a great source of protective phytochemicals, naturally low in fat, and super easy to digest. Well, spirulina is all of that, an amazing cocktail of nutrients, safe for everybody. The first health benefit comes from the fact that spirulina is very high in bioavailable iron and can therefore reverse anemia. Anemia is actually a common condition, even in our developed countries. With a very high content in iron, over 1,000% more than raw spinach and a load of vitamin B, spirulina is an incredible help to prevent and even reverse anemia. It works by increasing red blood cells level of hemoglobin and increase the oxygen going to different muscles of the body. The next benefit we'll talk about today is that spirulina is a very powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory agent. 
You probably already have heard how oxidative damages can harm our DNA and our cells. This damage can lead to chronic inflammation and can contribute to cancer and other diseases such as diabetes or cardiovascular or neuro neurological disease. Spirulina is a fantastic source of antioxidant. Thanks to the incredible array of pigments found in spirulina, which can protect against oxidative damages. Indeed, spirulina is rich in beta-carotene, carotenoid, chlorophyll, and many other pigments. The most important pigment of all is called phycocyanin. This antioxidant is a pigment unique to spirulina that gives spirulina its distinct blue-green color. Phycocyanin is about 6% of spirulina by weight and can fight free radicals. It can also inhibit the production of inflammatory signaling molecules, providing really impressive antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. And not only phycocyanin is a powerful antioxidant, it has been shown to support healthy brain functions and help support the immune system. How impressive is that? Another important benefit of spirulina is that it can lower total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and triglycerides, while raising HDL cholesterol or the good cholesterol. In a study of 25 people with type 2 diabetes, 2 grams per day of spirulina significantly improved those markers. Another study in people with high cholesterol found that 1 gram of spirulina per day lower triglyceride by 16% and LDL by 10%. Several other studies have also shown favorable effects, but with a little bit higher dose of 4.5 to 8 grams of spirulina per day. Another great benefit of spirulina is that it's been, it has been shown to reduce blood pressure. Indeed, Studies have shown that as little as 4.5 grams of spirulina per day was effective to reduce blood pressure in individuals. And this is probably happening due to an increase in the production of nitric acid, oxid, a molecule that helps blood vessels relax and dilate. Spirulina has great anti-inflammatory properties and also boosts the immune system. And these facts give it the ability to be an effective treatment for allergies. Researchers looked at the long-term clinical effects of taking two grams of spirulina a day and found that it, it led to significant reductions in symptoms of nasal allergies for the six months duration of the study, with the effect growing stronger over time. So, assuming you are committed to taking it every day, spirulina will help. The next benefit is very important for people suffering of diabetes. Studies have shown that spirulina can significantly lower blood sugar levels. In some cases, it has outperformed popular diabetes drugs, including metformin. In most of the studies, as little as 2 grams per day had significant results. The next benefit we're going to talk about today is one of the main reasons I personally started to take spirulina. Spirulina has been shown to increase muscle strength and endurance. I am an endurance athlete and spirulina helps me compete better. Indeed, studies have shown that spirulina is reducing exercise-induced oxidative damages, which are the major contributor to muscle fatigue. Other studies have shown that it improves muscle strength and endurance. Okay, the next benefit is a bold claim, but it's not an empty claim. Some evidence suggests that spirulina can have anti-cancer properties. Some research in test animals showed it can reduce cancer occurrence and tumor size. 
Spirulina has been especially well studied for oral cancer, which is the mouth cancer, but also for precancerous tumors. In the description of this video, I will add the links of the studies I'm referring to, so you can read them and educate yourself about spirulina and its real benefits. In addition to its nutritional benefits, spirulina protects the brain from free radical damages by increasing the activity of two enzymes, the catalase and the glutathione peroxidase, in contrast to simple antioxidants which can only neutralize single free radicals before becoming inactive, these enzymes can continue to neutralize free radicals for as long as they are provided with the proper vitamins and minerals. This makes these enzymes much more powerful than individual antioxidants. And when they are functioning properly, they make the brain much more resistant to aging. Spirulina benefits include protection from Alzheimer's disease by reducing levels of amyloid beta proteins throughout the brain. People with Alzheimer's disease have abnormally high concentration of this protein, which accumulates into plaque and leads to severe memory loss and other problems. Animal subjects that eat spirulina are known to score higher on tests of memory and brain function. And last but not least, studies have shown that spirulina can help detoxify the body with the majority of the studies that have been done on heavy metals, mainly arsenic and radiations. Spirulina was actually used to treat children exposed to chronic low levels of radiation after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Soviet physicians at the Institute of Radiation Medicine in Minsk administered 5 grams of spirulina daily to some of the radiation exposed children for 45 consecutive days. They were amazed to see these children show rapid improvements compared to the children who did not receive spirulina. Today, individuals concerned about radio radioactive fallout in the wake of the Japanese nuclear disaster in Fukushima are using spirulina as one of the strategies available to protect them against the effect of radiation. Okay. So far, we talked about what is spirulina and what are the 10 main benefits of eating spirulina. Next, we'll see how much spirulina you should eat and how to use it. So, how much spirulina should you take? One important factor to remember about spirulina is that it will detoxify your body. How? By binding all the toxins in your body and eliminate them through your kidneys by urination. This means that if you've been exposed to a lot of toxins, and you'll be surprised sometimes how much toxins our bodies can accumulate. And if you start a full dose of spirulina, your body might overreact. You might feel nauseous, sweat a lot, and maybe even have some fever. This means that your body is overwhelmed by the work it has to do to get rid of the toxins. So the best is to start slowly. I would recommend to increase gradually and to build up to 10 grams. Take one gram the first day, two grams the second day, three grams the third day, and so on, until you reach 10 grams per day. I personally find that the easiest to incorporate spirulina in my daily life is simply by adding it to my meals. You can sprinkle it on your salad, it adds a great crunch, or add it to your sauces for a cool green color. There are so many healthy and yummy recipes on the web. And don't forget to check out our Spirulina Academy recipe book with recipes such as spirulina peanut butter cups or spirulina cheesecake, my favorite. And as always, listen to your body. Not everybody reacts the same. 
If you start it slow and it still doesn't feel right, stop. So, when should you avoid to take spirulina? Persons with the rare metabolic condition called phenylketonuria, PKU, or the inability to metabolize the amino acid phenylalanine, should not take spirulina. Simply because spirulina is rich in all amino acids, including phenylalanine. So if you're allergic, don't take spirulina. Also, if you have hemochromatosis or iron overload disease, you should avoid taking spirulina because it is rich in iron. So, to recap, in this video we've seen what is spirulina, what are the benefits of spirulina, and how to take it.